heard any of our plans or if you knew what we were doing, you knew that we were going to Tampa Bay to watch a hockey game of the Tampa Bay Lightning versus the Dallas Stars. And what happened was our flights got canceled. Great game though. Six to nothing. Go Bolts. We did not see it. No, nope, we didn't. We just ended up going to Disney World. So we are we are sitting here in the Orlando airport after leaving Disney World, and uh, and we have children all around us. Not a bad thing, but you might hear a few children. You might hear some sound systems going off, and it's uh, going to be epic. Um, so we're excited to be here, boys. Did you guys enjoy Disney World? I know this is not like the point of this topic, but did you enjoy Disney World? What was the highlight? For each of you. Oh man, highlight of my part. Oh, let's see. There's a lot of things in Disney. I gotta say the flight of passage Avatar ride in Animal Kingdom was probably my favorite ride that I did. Favorite meal was be our guest in Magic Kingdom last night. Oh yeah, Heath, what about you? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking flight of passage again. And I mean, we had the same meal, so be our guest. Yeah, I I would say that that for me it was also the same, flight of passage is just next level. It uh, is. Entertaining. It's some good stuff. It's the future of rides. Like, I, you, I wish more rides were like that. You truly, on Flight of Passage, feel like you are just flying through everywhere. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We do have some good news. This week we're actually doing a giveaway. Um, it is a Preds Fanatics hat. It's gold. How I like it. It's, I, I wear it. It's actually I, a really nice hat. It's a super nice hat. We picked it out because we would wear it. It's. We love it. Um, and so we think you would love it. The way you need to enter is you need to subscribe to us on either Spotify or iTunes and give us a review and a rating um, and send us a screenshot on that on Twitter um, and and we will enter you to win the hat. We have a certain amount of entries. We need to e actually run the contest. Um, it's not a big number, but we need a certain number of people. Tell your friends. So you need to share it with your friends. Tell them, hey, go do this, and we will enter them for a chance to win as well. So go ahead and enter that contest and uh, and you will have a chance to win like one of the coolest hats ever. Um, so enter that contest. Um, the craziest thing that has happened this week is the Preds beat Montreal on Thursday night. Um, we're recording this on Saturday so they're playing Las Vegas tonight. Um, a lot of people have been questioning. If you get on Twitter get all that type of thing. People are constantly like, the Preds aren't complete. The Preds don't have everything. Where do you think the Preds should go? Do you think they should make any trades? What do you think we do from here as the Nashville Predators? Um, I just want chemistry. Uh, if that means we have to get another trade to get more goal scoring, sure, let's do it. But we still, we did good the other night. I We didn't get to watch the game a lot, but from we the highlights were, I saw. Stuck on a, actually, yeah, we were not, we were, traveling and stuff yeah. like that no I, here's the thing that I'm thinking and this is me I am not somebody who's like I want to make a bunch of trades same I I like our team like I looked at the lineup for tonight and our fourth line is Hartman Yarncrow Grimaldi and that's scratching Cody McLeod they just and need, matter they need line so. consistency is so bad yeah line, I want chemistry and that only comes from line consistency and we are changing lines up so much right now Here's, okay, so here's my opinion on it. Everyone's saying that we absolutely have to have a trade in order to do anything. Um, my question is, why do we feel, like, like why on earth do we feel like we have to make a trade? I don't think you have to make a trade. Like, this, this team, <clears throat> I tweeted this out on uh, my Twitter the other day, like, and I was like, oh, we should trade for this guy, and tweeted out highlights of Kyle Turris. Um, before he got traded to Ottawa, and or before he got traded to Nashville, and he was so good. Yeah. Like Kyle Turris is that piece you're missing right now. He just needs to. He, he needs he, to do better than he, he needs is. to be. It would, I think it would be a lot better if he's with his actual line. It should be. Yeah, I know people have been ragging on the Turris Smith, Fiala Turris Smith. Smith line because it hasn't been producing. They haven't had time to get chemistry this year, especially had, coming back from injury. They've only been together one whole – was it even a one, whole game? No, it, it was on and off that game. Yeah, so they haven't even had a whole game to actually build that chemistry back up. So, I mean, it, it's With, just a, I don't know. I think you – especially if they want to figure out – is the second line? Do they have an issue with the second line? Well, because people are, yeah, and and the and I think the answer, if Kyle Turris gets hot, here's the thing, 
I don't know if you can trade Kyle Turris right now, and I'll tell you why. Because essentially, if you go out and you target another player, um, you're going to be trying to bring in a another top player. Right. Um, and you've got to give up something. You've got to give up something, and it's got to be cap. And I've heard names Who thrown around. It? or Yeah, I've heard names thrown around. We heard oh, Dante. Mark, Mark, Mark Zuccarello was one of them. Yeah, but, we actually heard like, that Preds were, might have been in talk with the New York Rangers on Thursday night about acquiring Mark Zuccarello. Here's the thing, though, is, okay, so you can get him now. Do you think that as a uh, as a long term, um, do you think you try to rent somebody, or do you think it is a or Matt Zuccarello? Matt, <laughs> um, it's been a long day. Yeah, uh, do you think that you try to get a rental, or do you think that you try to go after a long term player? Because in my opinion, you don't rent somebody right now. I like long term. Long term, I don't think you rent because if you rent, you're gonna have to give them an asset. Because what happens if you get this rental that scores 15 goals in playoffs? Everyone loves him, and then he goes bye bye. Everyone's gonna be well, sad. Here's the thing. Everyone's like, why well, are we gonna sign him? For him? Exactly. Here's the issue. But that's why I would rather just get someone and sign them. The long-term. issue with me is if they're gonna get a rental and he's really good, they're gonna have to give up somebody big, and then if you get a rental, you're down. You're you're out of key guy. Yeah. And I don't think you trade Tolvanen because Tolvanen, and I mentioned this to you guys the other day, a team that was trying to gun for it yeah. and we're like, let's get some veteran leadership and some good players. Let's go get Martin Erat, the Washington Capitals, and they gave up a guy like Philip Forsberg who wasn't being perfect for him at the time, and look who he is now. Yeah. yeah. And, and so for me, I'm just like, don't trade Tolvanen, and I'm not sold on Tolvanen, but don't trade Tolvanen, don't trade Fabro, don't trade anyone. But just, you know, if you're playing for now, I'd trade him. If you want to, yeah. If you want to win a cup this year, if you you're, we're, I know we need to get up for the future. I know we don't need to throw away all of our assets that we have sitting up in Milwaukee. But you know, Toronto gave up a lot to get Jake Muzzin because they want to gear up to win now, and you might have to do it. If Poyle is in that win now mindset, then he'll do it. I believe. Yeah. Here's the question though: is is win now, win now, and win next year? I think it could be, but you definitely cannot. If well, you yeah, because you can sign someone to a one-year contract, even if it was a rental. I I just don't I don't see the point in going out and uh, I don't see the point in going out and trying to get a rental and sacrificing a lot and sacrificing a lot. Okay. Yeah. And so for me, if you're gonna go out and make a trade, you get a guy long term. Here's the thing. Like I was saying earlier, I think Kyle Turris is the missing piece right now. If he starts playing. Suddenly, your team is so much better than they were before. I mean, it'll be like how they started out the season, thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it it'll be, maybe it'll be opposite year this year in playoffs, where the Fiala Tura Smith line will actually be there but on the, the thing, ice and be good. The thing is, last year they saw play together. Yeah, they do, and it's got to start somewhere. But it's not starting tonight, apparently, because Kyle Turris is on the third line and. Benino's on the second line, I believe. You know, I don't hate it, though. I don't. I mean... Because you're in February. Benino's played well. Uh, Benino has played great. I think, on it, I fully believe this team is mediocre right now. And the last time we were sitting there frustrated and wanting to get everything and forget the entire team was 2016-2017. Yeah. When you make that run. Because it's not about being hot in the regular season. It's about being hot right now. And that brings me to my next... Okay. Thing and actually, Josh Kirby, uh, listener of the show, so much thanks to that, um, sent us this question um, of another guy who's hot right now, Victor Arvidsson. Is that how many goals do you think Arvidsson is going to have this year? What do you guys? Thirty-seven. Lock it in. Uh, Why do you say thirty-seven? Uh, I don't know. I just think it's a Man, good round number. I think. Because you look right now, and he's at 26 goals. How many games do we have left? Uh, about 20? No. I believe so. It, oh, here you go. We have... Uh, How many games have we played? See, we played Nashville 58. No, 60 games. 60 games, so we have 22. 22 games. 22 left. games left. And Victor Arvidsson is at 26 goals. I'm going to say 11 more goals in that 22 games. I could be wrong. It could be low. Because the way he's scoring, see, he's a goal a game right now. Here's the thing. I think he's going to end up with about... I'd love to see him hit 40. How I'd magical like, would it be if he went from 26 to 40 in 22 20, games? That's scoring a goal a game, game almost. So, Cole, what's your final answer? 37, lock it in. 
37. 37. Susie, he scores 11 goals in 22 games. That Heath, what about you? I'm thinking more like 32. Man, I was going to say, man, but what if he stays as hot as he is right now? That's this Joe Feline's burning hot right now. Which is not a good thing in my opinion. No, because it's like fall off the face of the planet here in March. You know, really I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, by the way, Arvidsson, 35. Fair enough. That's a good number. 35. I might be a little hot. But no, I think you're I think you're on. You could be right. I am just nervous about this team and and how we're scoring. I'm nervous we well, lose the thing, the Jofa is, for the playoffs. If, if you and lose Jofa for the, the playoffs heat. and you don't have a if, if the second line doesn't start picking up. I don't think we lose Jofa. As long as health wise they stay together, I don't I think their play will be there. You I think, really think their play I mean, will be there. But you be. would you say that about McKinnon, Rontanen, and Landeskog in Colorado? They have Fall, have they not fallen off? They have fallen off. They, they have fallen, fallen off, but they are the only part of their team that is good. This is true, but you also look at Nashville right, right now. I still think Nashville. Is okay, but Nashville line. has, and that this question's been thrown out there: Is Nashville a one-line team? And it seemed like that for a little bit. It seemed like we were a Jofa line, and that's it. But I believe that this our depth is a lot better than Colorado's. Our defense, we everyone in the NHL would agree that Nashville's defense is better than Colorado's. And, I mean, yeah. That's all I got to say about that. So you don't think we're a one-line team? No, no and I think I think at the moment you're you're not a, you're not technically a one-line team. I mean, you have Ryan Hartman and Brian Boyle scored on Thursday night, and I love – that was two guys no, on the deck. Yeah, that's that a good scoring. thing. If, but they, if those lines get going. Yeah. yeah they need to because Hartman went 28 goals without a game until Thursday. Just to throw this out here, Migo Rantanen has 76 points. McKinnon has 75 Landis Gog has 58. But they all are floating around almost 30 goals, except Gabriel Landeskog has 30 goals. Rantanen has 24. He's the lowest goal scorer. Yeah, yep. but that's still really low. But then, who's their next one down the list here? 18, I guess, maybe, with Nutterberg? Are you looking at points? No, goals, goals. Goals, 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 goals. goals, goals. Uh, yeah, so Soderberg so has 18. Soderberg. Um, if you look at points... The drop off goes from it's Rontanen, McKinnon, Landeskog, and then Tyson Burry. Points, Eighteen points separates the top line of the Avalanche to their next guy. And so, if and you go and you look at the Nashville Predators, we have two defensive guys in our top three, with Roman Yossi with 46 points, Matthias Ekholm with 40 points, and Ryan Johansson leads the team with 53 points. But that, the only issue I have there is that the thing with the Predators is that yeah, they are getting some depth here, but. I think we kind of miss a full, like, almost, I guess you can say it's Victor Arvidsson with the 30 goal scorer, but somebody that has already around 60 points total. Yeah. I just want to throw this out here. We can sit here and talk about how great of a defenseman Eric Carlson is, and I'm fine with that. And I know this is totally going off topic. Um, but Roman Yossi this year has 46 points. Carlson has 43 now, then you look at Brent Burge, who has 63, or I'm sure Morgan Riley. Um, Everyone has more points than the Preds. Yeah, that's which, true. And we're still a top team, which what does that mean? That means we have depth. Yeah, it and does. We're not a one-line team. When you look at our stats, we are not a one-line team. Suddenly, it stands out that we're not a one-line team. because, Or at least we have been maybe in the last five games, but not before that. It, it drives me crazy. We are such emotional fans yeah you go through a bad five stretch a five game stretch and everyone reacts yeah. yeah give it a break yeah well i mean it's like when people are saying trade fiala tourist first round draft pick and tolvin in for smart stone that was oh, giving on. up so much Stop. Stop. I, think, I think actually he was asking for huberto but yeah it was huberto, it was huberto. what was that facebook post was that Which for was jonathan that? huberto yeah, yeah. For jonathan huberto I couldn't remember who it was, so I just said this. Guy. No, it was Jonathan it was Huberto. Huberto. Now that I remember. That, that would be just absolutely I mean, idiotic. You're the first round, two key players and a prospect. Well, basically, a guy who could, who could possibly bring his team you know, another version of Phil Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Guys, the St. Louis Blues are one of the hottest teams in the NHL. They're 9-1 in their last 10. They've won 
eight straight games. If they win tonight versus Colorado, they will tie their longest winning streak in franchise history, dating and, back to 2002. And with nine minutes left, they're up 2 nothing. Oh, that was oh, fast. Man, that I was just fast. checked before we started the podcast, and it was yeah. 0-0. Yeah, so... So they are they are rolling. And They're on the road to tie their win streak. Well, here's the thing: a lot of the, for me, a lot of credit goes to Gold Jordan team. Bennington. Yeah, he's, their he's goaltender. A, in his last 13 starts, he's 11, one and one with a 1.53 goals allowed and a 9.38 save percentage and three shutouts in 13 games. Is the goalie the most important person on a hockey team? Yeah, because he can make or break a game for you. He well, like, if he lets him four goals, you're going to lose. Yep. Yeah. With the, with Which, of what? course, you could have a crappy defense. But still, Which at the end of the day, the pucks get past the goaltender. You, you think a lot of the you, – you look back at the National Predators in, like, 2010 when they basically relied on Rene to win games for them because they only were scoring about two goals, three goals a game. Yeah. I mean, I'm, a goalie can make or break your season. Welcome to the St. Louis Blues, yeah. where Jake Allen literally is the person who ruined them. In and the he's half, getting paid $4.3 million a year. Not they, as bad as they're the gonna, I think they're going to – do you think they look to dump him in the offseason? How, how many years does he have He left? signed through 2021. <gasps> how, with how much? Yeah. How much money? How much? 4.35 a man. year. That's sad. I think they try to dump him. If you're the Blues, could, you if you are the Blues, I think you – do you have to dump um, your projected cap space next year is $1.1 million. And you have a hefty amount of people to re-sign. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people you have to re-sign. Four on defense, and a five on five have they, no, no, have they worked and, out the goalie? No, oh, Benning, Bennington has to be re-signed too. Yeah, Benning, you have to If find, Bennington carries this team to playoffs, he'll get a he'll get a good he'll get some money. I would never pay for it. Well you better hope he gets some money. Yeah. No, I'm talking like he'll but get like Jake Allen, what do you do with Jake Allen? You gotta dump him. Who wants him? But who's gonna want him? I mean unless Who has awful goaltending? I was gonna say Philly, but Philly just got picked up. Philly so. just got oh if yeah. If you haven't been paying attention on Twitter yesterday, Philadelphia traded uh what's his face for Cam Talbot. Um What's his name? I, I think Stolaraz. If you're looking, if yeah, Anthony like, Stolaraz for Cam Talbot was a trade between Edmonton and Philadelphia yesterday. So Philadelphia has a solid backup goalie. Not solid. He's been playing awful. But with he, Carter Hart net for Philly, I'd be confident. Like if he, I'm Philly, I'm okay with. If Carter I'm Hart. a Philly fan, I'm actually feeling pretty good right now. I'm eight yeah. and one and one of my last ten. And still six points out of a and playoff now, spot. At least, right? like, you know you have a goaltender that has experience. And we know Cam Talbot can be good. He's been good in he's the past. Really he's good. just been – It's not this season. Not this season has well. not been a the season. The thing about Cam Talbot, he's very – he'll have a really good season. He'll just bad, he'll have an average season. He'll have a really yeah. good season. He'll have an average season. Well, you guys got to remember that a couple years ago, he went from having a league-leading um, – no, I just read this. I think it was like a league leading forty two wins. Yeah, sounds or, about right. Or or some or something like that. He had a ton of games played. Um but he, yeah, he had a it was forty two wins, um, and played four thousand two hundred and ninety four minutes. Um and he played great. He was amazing. And so the question is, is a little change of scenery gonna be good for him? I think so. I think it will and be. I think it'll also, work out well. And he's out of the Oilers. Mentoring kind of Carter Hart. Yeah, the Which Oilers really is good. just not a place to be right now. In well, because here's the thing: you don't know if the, yeah they fire their head coach. I think you need to fire management. Ken Hitchcock, but they when you know I was listening to on I was on listening to a podcast on the radio the other day, and they're saying, well, Ken Hitchcock's only signed right now as head coach at the end of the season, so they don't know if they're gonna have another head coach coming in at the end of the season. Uh, does Ken Hitchcock want to work for I, them I, next year? I don't. Think I don't think so. so. He's gonna go back to retirement. Do you go get Quinville? Uh, it's a possibility. Do, would he accept that job? I don't think so. You know, I, don't know I if think he, he would camp. under certain circumstances. I mean, he was in Chicago. How much colder is? No, I'm, not, I'm just saying. He, I don't really think he wants to move. Yeah, to I get that. Um, um, he, he, but we we got off on goaltending just because we were talking about Jake Allen. Uh, end of that discussion is you got to dump Jake Allen. You got 1.1 million dollars in projected cap space. You got 10 people to sign. Yeah, the, Jake Allen has but to be gone. But who wants that contract? I, you know, the no only, one. The, the only thing I think you could ever see anybody doing, which it's not going to happen, are unless the Rangers have something to 
back end and a prospect of a goalie. But to see the Rangers have Lundqvist lined up for another three years at eight point five million. Yeah, two years ago. Here's what you do: you trade Allen to Carolina, have them buy him out since they have sixteen million in cap space, and then let him just go resign wherever he wants. Yeah, yeah, for cheaper. Yeah, yeah, because. That's something that and would. Since his he's crapped the bed this season, he will be sitting as a backup goalie. Well, he's kind of dumped possibly off even last season. Yeah. He's he's not good. He's not a good player. And and I hate to be like that. But he's not. I will claim that I caused the downfall of Jake Allen. Why is that? Because Amelia and I, uh, my fiance and I, were sitting there at a game one time, and her dad's company's old tickets that were right yeah. on the visiting tunnel. And we sat there and harassed him. He was not playing that night. You got in his head. We got in his head. And since that moment, he's been a trash goalie. I'm not. He was hot before that. Has not played well since. Yep. It's all your fault. I'm. As the Preds fans say. Let's let's either blame myself or Amelia or both of us. I blame your fiance. That way, it's off your shoulders. You don't need to carry that around. Okay. Yeah. I blame her as well. That let's let's just toss that on her. Works out well. Um, Some other news around the league, if you haven't heard already, it's about a week old news, uh, that Randy Carlisle has gotten fired from the Anaheim yeah. Ducks. Hey, to me that's not the big story. No, it's not. No, it's not a big story at all. Because he it needed was, to get fired. It was yeah. obvious it was going to happen eventually. I mean, come on, like just you lost 16 to like 17 games. It took them a little while to figure that out. But. Here's, here's, the, here's the big story here. The fact that the Ducks general manager, Bob is Murray, the is now the head coach. And the thing Crazy. that... You know, I think we were sitting in the line the other day, and he made this awful announcement of making a morning skates option. He basically canceled every morning skate and said, yeah. you can come if you want, but you do not have to show up. Why would a coach do that? So like, you guys just have a good year and show up to games. He said He's basically saying, you know what, show up next year, we'll, we'll see what happens. But the are they giving up? They have to. There's no way. I think they are. They're going to make it. And the thing with me is that they've got Ryan Kessler still on the second line, and he is absolutely terrible. Who else do they have to put on the second line? Well, they just need, they need to make a statement. You know what's sad? They're only three games out of a playoff spot, which is depressing. Well, sort of. Kind of. They're seven points. Oh yeah, seven. Never mind. The I was thing looking at is, the wrong team. Yeah. Is four games. It's their cap space is what's really messing with Yeah. Detroit and Anaheim have the two worst cap situations of all teams. Why don't you dump Corey I mean, Perry? You're, you're paying Ryan Kessler eight point two five million. Until 2021. And Corey Perry, what, 6.25? No more. He's the highest. Uh, Corey Perry is at 9. 8.625. Man. Yeah. And that the thing is, is two contracts no one wants. Ryan Kessler has four goals and two assists. And he's played 50 games. Do you trade Ryan Getzlaff? And he's a minus 21. Yeah, you have got to trade a lot of people. They're old. Who do you trade? Who do you try to get in return for Getzlaff? I think you would get more out of. Ryan Kessler, and I think I misspoke on this. Ryan Kessler's actually getting paid six point eight. I mixed up Ryan Getzloff and Ryan Kessler. Ryan Kessler. Kessler. Ryan Kessler. <laughs> it's been a long day. We are tired. Um, Ryan Getzloff's getting paid eight point two, and then Ryan Kessler six point eight. But I think you'd get more out of Ryan Kessler than you would out of Getzloff. I think a change of scenery I, I for know. Kessler. Wait, would... wait, 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 wait. Why would you say Kessler is a better deal than Getzloff? I mean, they're both old. They're both old, but Ryan Gitzlav is at least still a good player. I mean, he is, but I think if Ryan Kessler saw another a different team, I think he might kind of rejuvenate. But is his body not broken? Uh, yeah, he's been hurt a lot. I mean, Gitzlav. Oh, oh. I mean, Gitzlav is just Oh my bad goodness. Right now too. Okay, boys, boys, don't don't pull it up. Don't pull up any stats on the team this year. Tell me. Too late. The don't look at the. Oh, Cole. Here you did. Who you we're all sitting here minus? looking at it. Are we looking at their? Oh, I'm looking at their uh, size. Okay. Guess the most amount of points on the That's Anaheim terrible. Ducks team. Oh, I was already horrible. looking at that. That is terrible. Oh, we thought we were bad. <laughs> it's wow. Like we thought we Ryan were Ryan Gitzlav is the top point getter for the Anaheim Ducks. <laughs> How many points does he have, Ben? 36. That's so bad. 46? 30. 30. 30. That's a 30. 6. 36. Wow. In 52 games. Wow. Then That's you, almost as low as my first test score in college. <laughs> what was your first test score in college? Oh, uh, like a 35. <laughs> no, a 38. What class? <laughs> I think it was computers with that mean guy. <laughs> yeah. 
One uh, more time. Hey, I, I, I got an A in it, though. It's fine. Man, that... <laughs> You know, if you're a playoff team, do you go get one of those guys? Oh, no, you don't want one of those contracts. You I was saying for their size, Getzlav is 6'4", like 225, I and Kessler is 6'2", and 205. I Boom. go get Ryan Getzlav. Yeah, then you go get Getzlav. And also, th- this sounds bad. I, I am not a Ducks fan. I can't stand Perry. I can't stand Kessler. Yeah. yeah. I like Ryan he's, Getzlav. He's a guy. I miss my but he's actually, I mean, he plays. He's a like good a guy in a bad place. Though. Yeah, exactly. At, well, he's, he's won is a he lot a little there. expensive? Yeah. He's a, oh, he's a little but he's a top player expensive. in the league, right? Uh, uh, not really. Not anymore. I mean, if he was on a better maybe team, maybe. Maybe if he had maybe. a different team, it might help him. But out. 11 goals and 25 assists is not top in the league. Oh, my gosh, guys. We just missed two French Bulldogs. Aw. Yeah. It was, was it Ryan cute. Johansson and no, Madison Bell? No, no, those are English Bulldogs. Oh. It was French not Doug and Dozer. Um, let's years. let's put this in perspective. Guess did we say it was it was thirty eight points was the uh, well see that's not as bad as I thought originally because yes it is okay it's bad yeah, it's because it's, it's your top school. it's your top point getter right now. It would be different if he was like number four. He is MVP of the Anaheim Ducks with 36. But guess how many people on the Leafs are better than him? I don't know, five? Four. four. But you look at the situations, that means Gitslav is having a great season for the yeah, hand he's being really dealt. Bad yeah, season. he's having an all-star season on an awful team. So let's, let's okay, so Toronto has, has four guys ahead. I wonder if you go look at like a, sorry, I'm pulling up Tampa right now. Because Tampa's going to be... Nashville only has four. Nashville has four. Oh, my, Tampa. Tampa only has three, which is crazy. Because Kucherov has 92 points. Guys, guys, guys. Let's just admire the drop-off of points. From Steven Stamkos at number three to Victor Hedman. Who's really good? Stamkos. Stamkos is third on the team in points with 69 points. And then it drops to Victor Hedman with 37. That's a draw. Points. That's concerning. Yeah, it is. Then of course, Hedman's a D-man. Which but I know, you're I also like, Tyler you're Johnson. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. JT Miller, Knox Cowan. And so, like, you have those three guys, but it doesn't mean that they're Tampa's playing Tampa's a anymore. one-line team. I mean, you could say that. You could, but they're Points so Points-wise, you could say it, but, but they're still good at that. they're matter. still good all around. All right, we'll start wrapping this bad boy up um, just because we're in the airport. Um... Did you guys see the Hurricanes baseball yes, celebration? Heck great. yeah, knocked it out of the that park. Was awesome. Get it? That was great. Oh, uh, that was awful. Yeah, that it was. was. Actually, I thought it was pretty good, but you know, it fit in well. Um, they are hot right now. Yeah. Eight, two, and two in the last. And ten. they celebrate like it. They're fun to watch. Yeah. Do they make it into the playoffs over the Pittsburgh Penguins? Absolutely not. Why? See, it's, Why? It's the only reason I say is that is because it is the Pittsburgh Penguins, they and they will find the their way into the playoffs. Okay, they're a point back with the same amount of games played. They've just lost one less game. Like, Pittsburgh lost a game. I don't think Carolina can hold up. You don't I think, think? I think Pittsburgh is the last team in the playoff. Could Montreal the fall out? Conference. Uh, they have, know. they have, they're only, Carolina's only back three on Montreal. The, the Canadians could fall out, but uh, it's just, that, that's more of a, that's more of a possibility than the team right Pittsburgh's four, five, and one in their last ten. Right, but. They haven't looked great. No, they haven't. And they really need some, a little bit more consistent goal team. That's what they haven't gotten to. Yeah, that's true. I would love to see Carolina make it. I just want to see Thunderclap in the playoffs. That would be hype. I'd have to go to a game. I mean, it would be great if Carolina can make it. I th- they, they really can, but... Oh, that's so they can, yeah. I think your best bet would be Montreal dropping out. Pittsburgh for standing. Carolina? Yeah. Hey, I'm all for it as long as Carolina's in the playoffs. Speaking playoff. of dropping out and dropping off, Buffalo's 4-5-1 and one in their last 10 games, and I think Buffalo's cooked for the They're year. done. They're done. The, the Hurricanes will have a big march coming up here. Like, not march to the playoffs. March, as in the march. Um, as they play... Pittsburgh and Montreal nearing the end of March. And Tampa. And no, they played Pittsburgh twice. The 31st and the 19th. Those of March. are huge games. games. Coming up for the Put those on your calendar because those are going to be yeah. fun. Those are going to be playoff hockey type. Atmosphere. Because they are fighting for playoffs in those games. The Canes have the sixth toughest schedule remaining. 
Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that's yeah, a I, tough. Hey, situation. what's Nashville at? 11. 11. What's Penguins? Pittsburgh is at 12. 12. Mm. It's about right. What about the Habs? So, I mean, essentially, they both have a decently tough. Those games could be the deciders. Yeah. I mean, if, they, if they all are about one point apart, that could decide the playoffs. All right. To wrap up today's show, we have one more thing that we have to do. In the month of February, what are your Stanley Cup final and Stanley Cup champion predictions? You know what? I said it in the first or second podcast whenever we did this the first time that it was Nashville versus Boston in the Stanley Cup with an undecided I didn't know who would win. I think I said Nashville maybe. But I think I'm going to change. And I think the San Jose Sharks are going to play Boston. I still think Boston, man, that's a gritty, fighting, fun team. Bro, you, gritty plays for the Flyers. Bro, bro, gritty <laughs> sucks. <gasps> yeah, I just cussed. That's like that's like saying a cuss word, essentially, is that gritty sucks. But, hey, gritty, if you listen to this podcast, you can beat up. I'll beat your one lap time any day of the week. Take that, gritty. So you think, hey, who do you think? Yep, Sharks Boston uh, for Cole. Who wins? Who wins? Boston. I, I'm, I'm going Sharks, and man, if I had to pick right now, I'm going Sharks. And I have a feeling Toronto might make it. Sharks, I would Sharks, love the <laughs> Leafs, as Ben is wearing a Austin Matthews jersey Let's in the go airport. Austin, let's go Leafs. But here's the thing. The Sharks will come out on top. Yeah, probably. Interesting. Six Interesting. All right, here's what I'm going with. I'm going with the Nashville Predators. I'm glad one of us actually chose our team. Yeah. Versus the Toronto Maple Leafs. Wow, that would be a really good series. I would and I have that. Nashville coming out on top. If Nashville and Toronto made it to the playoffs, that would be the best. <laughs> oh, it would be the most like, fun. It'd it would be a lot of fun. Nashville. Oh, it would be so. The fun. only other matchup I could dream of Nashville playing is Nashville Tampa. Tampa would be a lot of fun. It would be fun. Yeah. Both would be so fun. They're just different. Oh yeah. Flight tickets to Tampa are so much cheaper. Truth. I don't know if Truth. you can even get a ticket in Toronto. <laughs> oh, yeah. Playoff comes around, you can't get a ticket to the game, probably. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. We are so sorry for the background noise. If you made it this far through Screaming Children and through announcements and that type of thing. We'll be back in our studio next week with a lot better quality, better yep. sound. Maybe a little more energy next yeah. time. Sorry, we got some things messed up. And I just... Messed up, but we're just kind of... Absolutely.